Good morning, folks. We've got a number of cool science stories today. Mini science smackdown coming at the end, but we've got positive papers today as well. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was quiet in the sense that we had no solar flares of consequence from the active regions. A couple filaments snapped, but didn't erupt at Earth, and the sunspots on the north and leading on the south have decayed. There's now even less magnetic complexity at those active regions, and at the trailers on the south, we see they're still growing, developing umbral cores, and yet still manage to remain relatively quiet in X-ray flaring. We will continue to monitor the flares, but we will also be watching the solar wind as both the coronal hole stream and tiny CME are on their way here this week. Let's start the science articles with some aesthetics. Fun little simulation here on space turbulence. This has long been an underestimated aspect of space plasma interactions, including with the neutrals, and it's great to see the treatment here. Also excellent to see this. The heating and cooling functions get so much play in the astrophysical plasma science, but it turns out they're not even real. The temperatures of the gas and plasma are already affecting interactions and densities, and that is where those functions need to be looking. Let's keep raising cosmology here as Michael Turner had quite the afternoon. Published one on the problems with the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, and another one on the different cosmological paradigm. This was the more fun one to read, and if you know plasma cosmology well, try your hand at working it into his framework. Up next, the nonchalance of this announcement is relatively inappropriate. White dwarfs continue to show evidence of fusion, but how is that possible if its core burning is done? Oh yeah, they do fusion on their surface. One of the things that electric and plasma physicists have described for years finally shows up as a half-baked side statement from Hubble. Yes, elemental creation happens on the surface of stars, and not just white dwarfs, but on the sun, which is why there are varying chemistries of solar wind and CMEs and post-flare corona. Sort of one of the biggest stellar fusion stories in two decades, and it's barely plugged for what it is. Now it's time for a little spanking, and NASA gets the day off because this time it's climate.gov and NOAA. Now this is super shady as a climate communication, plainly cutting out particles and magnetic fields in the title, just focusing on irradiance. Okay, we'll let them have their game as always, we'll play devil's advocate and stomp it out anyway. This is what they show for solar changes over time versus Earth temperature, and it's easy to make the chart look like this when you ignore particle forcing and the fact that Earth's weakening magnetic field is allowing more solar protons to destroy ozone and allowing more of the irradiance to reach the surface, which is decreasing Earth shine, Earth's albedo, we're soaking more of it up, if you recall that story from earlier in the week, and add the weakening magnetic field with what you see top right corner of the curve, highest solar activity of the entire Holocene, exactly while the field has been weakening, exactly during global warming. And when they show the irradiance variation cycle to cycle for the sun, it's the ultimate fraud. Folks, this was in our 2015 books, presentations, and it's in every post edition and in our climate movie. Those down spikes in the data, a tiny fraction are eclipses. The rest are the sun's most massive blasts, flares, CMEs, and geomagnetic storms. The irradiance only data not only doesn't show the spike upward, cheating the sun's influence in human minds, but by dropping out, it tells climate science the sun gave us less energy, when in fact, it jumped up 100 to 1,000 X, and that climate effect, without a way to blame solar irradiance, is blamed on humans. Oh, and by the way, they also have pretty much all come around to quietly recognizing that we're only one solid volcanic uptick away from us saying goodbye to global warming for the rest of our lives. If you haven't seen our climate movie, it's the first episode of the climate playlist we have, and it sets the stage for what they're discovering by the week now. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.